there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walters World and today we're on the Royal Crescent here in Bath, England. And today we have for you or what tourists should know before they come to Bath so they can get the most out of Bath. And the thing is, you see this architecture behind me, Georgian architecture, you're going to see some amazing architecture here. If you want like the cliche guidebook kind of saying, oh it's a Georgian gem with the architecture here, but it's true. You see fantastic stuff like the Royal Crescent here, this actual museum and number one you can go into and see what it looked like in the 1800s. To a good feel for it. What I think is cool, you know, it's all the same on the outside, but if you go inside, there's differences and stuff like that. So that's really cool. But the thing is, you're going to walk all over the city and see fantastic architecture when you are here. Yes, this is one of those cliche, wander the city and see things. But honestly, wandering around, the architecture is really, really cool here. Just down the way, you have a circus, which is a whole circle, you know, traffic circle that is all the Georgian townhouses, all the same one going around. It is really, really cool. And you'll go around and you'll see that. But the thing is architecture is a really big deal here there's even an architecture museum you can go to when you are here there's architectural tours you can take so it is a really cool thing but the thing is it's not the architecture that really put Bath on the map what put it on the map are the hot springs that are here these are the only hot springs in Britain okay and there's actually Roman spa you can go see the Roman spa when you are here the Roman baths and the thing is they still have the architecture they still have the the, the drainage and the piping and all those things and the, the layout of the Roman temple that was here, the Roman baths that were here, and you can go do a tour of that. And it is actually a really cool tour. They give you an audio guide that tells you all kinds of history. They have it in all kinds of languages. They have a version of it for kids and all kinds of stuff. But it's really cool when you go around and you, you come up above. When you come in, you look down from above in that postcard shot of the thermal baths down there. And it's just really kind of a cool thing with the abbey in the background and all this kind of stuff. And the thing is, it's been built up over the years. Okay, so the statues you're seeing on the top, those aren't actually from Roman times, all right? <laughs> The, the spa location is, but the actual makeup that you're going to see a lot of it is actually from a little bit more recent times, okay? But when you go around, they have, you know, they've recreated some of the, the situations that people had when you're there. They have some of the artifacts that were found there. You see some really cool, cool artifacts they found, and they kind of talk you through it all and how it would be if you went to the, to the spa and things like that, and that's really kind of a cool thing. And that's one of the big reasons why Bath is on the map, and probably why it's called Bath kind of things, but it is really, really cool. Now, when you are there, you cannot get into the water. Some people, I've talked to locals, they say, oh, when it gets cold, some people get a little crazy and jump in. No, 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 you'll get in big trouble for that. Don't even put your hand in the water, just let it be, okay? If you wanna try the water and drink it, they have a little drinking fountain of it. You can get a glass and try it, or go to the restaurant that's in the spa, or in the, the, the Roman baths, you can try that, okay? But the thing is, if you actually wanna go into a spa kind of thing, there's the Therme Bath Spa you can go to, and it's kinda of cool, cause like they have a top floor that you can lay out in the hot spa and look at the beautiful architecture of the city. You do have that. So you can do the spa thing when you are here, it's just not in the Roman baths. Okay, just have a heads up for that one. Another thing is what's cool about this city, it's very compact, so you can easily walk around and see the architecture, do the sites and all these kind of things. But one thing I'll say is when you come out of the Roman Baths, or when you're at the Roman Baths, you're gonna turn and see Bath Abbey. And it is really amazing. When you look at the facade, you'll see the tower, you'll see the tower that's there, and you actually go up the tower, which is kind of cool. It's got a great view of the city. But I want you to do is look at the like tip of the spires going up the side, and you'll see angels crawling up and one coming down uh, the ladders to heaven and stuff like that it's really neat when you go inside they have fantastic fantastic architecture inside check out the ceiling when it's there you can see the west window where they have books of the bible my kids like oh that that's that, that's that's Eve and, and that's that's Noah and that's these things. It is kind of a cool thing to go, hey, I remember Sunday school stuff from these things. And that's how people would learn about the Bible. It's the pictures because not everyone could read back in the day. But the people at Bath, that Bath Abbey were super nice and super helpful and they'll give you the history of the area as well. So it's a really kind of a cool thing to do. Now, some other things you can do when you are here, there's a lot of museums in the, in the city to see. If you want art museums, they have ha that. If you want history museums and architecture museums, they have that. They have a fashion museum that's here. I'll list some of the museums on here so you have an idea what to see. Um, but I know one that Jocelyn really wanted to see, and I suggest if you're a Jane Austen fan, do come to Bath and check out the Jane Austen Center. Now I'm going to tell you, it's really for really die-hard Jane Austen fans, okay? I like Jane Austen, 
but I don't like it as much as Jocelyn, okay? Jocelyn was there for about an hour and some odd, reading everything and stuff like that. I was there with the boys, we made it about half an hour, and then we went to one of the circuses, one of the parks, and started playing around, okay? But when you go inside, it tells about her history, and you can learn about how she grew up and her family and stuff like that, the inspiration she had behind her books and things. And yes, you can do the dress up and things like that. I know Dar Jocelyn was very happy to get her picture with Mr. Darcy, you have those things, okay? Um, and if you are here, there's a lot more activity than just the historic walk it around stuff. You can rent bikes when you're here and you can ride it along the, um, the, the river here or the canals that are here. You can go out, they actually have trails going all throughout the city and around town. You go through some tunnels when you do it, it's really kind of a cool thing. Um, you can actually take a boat tour, about an hour long boat tour on the Avon or when you are here, which is kind of neat. It takes about an hour, but it has this nice views when you're going through and you really see some of the great architecture that's there. You actually, and you can grab that boat next to the Pulteney Bridge, which is, you know, one of those, one of the, another one of those postcard sites you're gonna see when you're here. You're gonna see a lot of those postcard things when you are here. Um, the thing is though, what I like about Bath is the vibe you get here. This is very much, when you think of like 1800s Britain, when you think of your Jane Austen stuff, you can feel what it was like there. You actually feel like, now I understand some of these books she wrote. I can kind of see it when I'm there. And it gives just kind of like this old world Britain feel, which is a really cool vibe. But what also is cool is there's a nice university here, which gives a lot of students that come here and gives a nice younger vibe too. But also tons and tons of tourists come here as well. And you have them coming in. So it's a really cool vibe of a city. And what's great with all the tourists and all the young people and all the history and all this kind of stuff, this city is used to tourism for thousands of years with the, with the bass, okay? So you'll be fine when you come here because they have tons of accommodations tons of restaurants, tons of nightlife and stuff like that. So there's always things going on, which is nice. And they have stuff going on for people of all ages, from young to old to partiers to not partiers to all kinds of stuff. There is a lot there, okay? Now I know I just said there's a lot of stuff going on. There's tons of stuff to do in the evening time. But one thing there's not to do in the evening time here in Bath is actually shopping. As you can see, we're here at the uh, Abbey. Oh, that's the Roman Baths. I mean, Things close relatively early, so get your shopping done pretty early, like by 6, uh, to make sure you can get everything you want to buy before you go out. Now the pubs and the restaurants are open and things like that, but shopping late night or later in the evening, I mean, you can go to Waitrose, but otherwise you're, you're a little bit out of luck, so make sure you're shopping done early if you want to go to the shops and stuff like that. So there's some pretty cool shopping here when you are here, but nighttime, it is beautiful, but aside from going out and eat or having a good time with the, some pub stuff, not a lot going on in terms of the shopping. So just want to add that one too. Now as a tourist, some things you should know, um, if, like I said, with the accommodation, you're gonna find a lot of bed and breakfasts, a lot of hotels, a lot of Airbnb kind of stuff, apartment rentals, these things. There's gonna be plenty of them there, okay? So you're not gonna have a tough time finding them. Just know that the prices do hike up a lot in the summertime and on weekends because this is a very popular destination for travelers to come here all year round. I mean, it's gorgeous here in wintertime at Christmas. Oh my God. I was here for Christmas with my parents. I don't know, it's been like 15 years, but it's been a while. But I remember we just had such a wonderful time here. And it was just gorgeous. And the people were so nice. And it really was really a fantastic thing. But what I'm going to tell you is when you get your accommodation, if you're doing your tour around England and you're driving here, parking is a major, major problem when you come to Bath, okay? So if you're going to be going to a hotel or you're going to be renting a place and make sure they have parking for you, they probably won't. What they might have is maybe a recommendation of a parking garage or a parking, public parking place you could go to. We got lucky. The place we're staying at this time, they actually had it with the apartment. You got a pass, like a, a pass for zone A to park in zone A, anywhere we could find a spot. The problem was is even if you have the parking pass, finding a spot to park can be really really tough okay so just have a heads up for that that's kind of a pain now if you're going to be coming here it is a super easy drive like we flew into Heathrow we grabbed our car and headed out of London don't ever drive in London pick it up in Heathrow and go explore the country if you want to do London do it at the end after you drop off your car okay but we got in our car I mean, it's like from Heathrow, it's like, I don't know, hour and a half, hour and 45 minutes, something like that. I mean, think of it this way. If you're coming from London, it's about two hours driving yourself. If you're going to take a bus here, it's going to be up three and a half hours from London. If you take the train, the train leaves from Paddington Station in London, it's about an hour and a half to get here. I mean, there's tons of options all the time, so it's really easy to get here. And with the train, it's actually close enough you could do a day trip from London, but I would actually recommend spending the night here because there's so many things to do and there's so much, you know, restaurants and stuff to enjoy when you're here all year round that it does worth it is worthwhile to come here now also what's nice compared to like a london kind of thing it is 
less expensive than London. I'm not going to say it's cheap here, okay? But it's definitely less expensive than London. I mean, it's not as cheap as going to Wales if you keep going west, but it is a, like fairly priced, especially compared to London and some places. Um, so do have a heads up for that. And if you want to get around town, what I recommend, if you drive in, drive in, if you find a place to park that car, just leave it. You can walk around to most of the sites very easily, but there is a nice public transportation system here. You can take the buses where you want to go. They go pretty often, so it's not too much of a problem. Um, but I will say, if you are having your own transportation or if you're going to be taking buses around, the two, for me, best day trips to take from here in Bath, one, you can go to Salisbury and see Salisbury Cathedral. That's another really cool town to check out, very historic city to check out. Or probably the more famous place to go is, is Stonehenge. You know, Stonehenge, the famous Stonehenge with the stones. That's about an hour away from here. You can drive there very easily. There's actually buses that go straight from here to there, or you can take a tour from here to there. No problem to Stonehenge. Um, but it is really kind of a cool thing to do. So that's why I say is, if you're going to come to Bath, you're going to come to this part of England, don't use it as a day trip from London. Come to Bath, make it a make it a place to stay, and then venture out from here because this city is really, really great for tourists of all ages. We've really enjoyed it. I mean, Johnson's been looking at housing here. I'm like, um, I don't have a job here. I know what you're looking for, for accommodation for. She's like, this city is amazing. So I do hope you do check it out. It is a fantastic city. Um, we've really enjoyed it. This is my third time here. I've been here by myself. I've been here with my parents. I've been here with my family, and it's been great every time and every single time there was some a lot of stuff for us to do so i really enjoyed it if you want to learn more about visiting england maybe the shocks of england or what you don't do in england and things like that check us out on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter facebook instagram youtube and we really appreciate your likes subscriptions and if you like travel videos like this honest helpful travel advice click that subscribe button and we put out a new travel video every wednesday and saturday and i know the sun's going down so it's you know the the light's not working so much anymore but it is a really great town and i also want to say thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon who help make videos like this possible. You really, really mean the world to us. So thank you all you out there and have a great time traveling and we'll say bye from Bath.